In this video, I'm going to tell you about why I prefer synthetic brushes over natural brushes for painting miniatures. During this time of global pandemic, uh, many of us have a lot more time on our hands because your hashtag shelter and hobby is staying at home for the good of everybody. Uh, and because of that, a lot of us are working with our brushes and painting our models. And many people are trying to make sure that they're stocked up on supplies that they need for this unknown amount of time. And so a lot of people think about paints and also brushes. And I've been thinking about brushes quite a bit as well. There are two main types of brushes that we use when painting our miniatures. There are, well, bristle brushes. There's also airbrushes, which are not really a brush, but anyway. Uh, the bristle brushes are synthetic bristles or natural hair bristles. So uh, kind of is what it says on the tin. Natural hair actually comes from some sort of animal, like, um, I don't know, squirrels, uh, goats, uh, boars, um, sables, which are kind of like minks, but also kind of technically weasels. Now, generally for miniature painting, we stay away from the goat and the boar and that kind of stuff. Those are more for people who paint like on canvases with like oil painting or maybe even acrylics as well. But it's real stiff, thick bristles, and it's for really getting in there, uh, working the paint into the canvas. For what we're trying to do, generally much smaller, much more delicate brushes. And there are a lot of people, there are a lot of articles, I read a lot actually in preparation for this video, but there's a lot of talk out there about what's better, whether it's synthetic or whether it is natural. Um, I figured I would just probably tell you what I like to do because then that can hopefully maybe inform which way you wanna go when you start buying brushes to kind of stock up a little bit. Generally, I am a dyed in the wool well, not wool, because that's an actual natural, but uh, I, synthetic uh, bristles for this guy over here. I am a big fan of synthetic for a bunch of different reasons, mainly because I am not a pro top-end painter. I do okay. Yeah, I do decent enough work. I'm happy with generally with gen what I'm able to do, but the reason I do what I do is because I want to get pieces on the tabletop so I can play. I am not a display painter. I am not a competitive painter. I don't go out there to try to win awards. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not what I do when I'm painting. I'm not painting to make an amazing looking piece and potentially you know, be judged by judges or whatever and all that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to get stuff that looks cool to me on the tabletop and so that I can then get more stuff that looks cool to me on the tabletop, kind of as quickly as possible. So for me, synthetic brushes are best, and here's why. Synthetic brushes are better generally with acrylics, specifically with metallic acrylics, what that means is, is they can take the damage from that type of paint better than natural hair brushes can. Natural hair brushes can last a good long time, but you have to spend a quite a bit of time conditioning them, kind of like the hairs in my beard or the hairs in, sort of on my hair, on my head. Uh, but you have to spend time really um, being nice to natural hair brushes, unless you like throwing 15 to $20 away every couple of weeks, you know, just with all brushes. When your brushes cost a buck or two, then if they get chucked every two to three to four weeks, that's not so bad um, as it turns out, at least in my mind. One of the reasons that I generally, and I own some natural brushes, but I have a very, very, very bad tendency to not use them much is because I'm always concerned I'm going to break them ruin them, whatever, not clean them properly, all that kind of stuff. And I wanna spend more time getting models done and put them on the table than I want to spend uh, conditioning the hair in my brush. This is just a personal preference for me. Your, your mileage may vary. And again, if I was trying to freehand all kinds of crazy cool stuff on the shoulder pad of some giant orc who's got a, then I would probably have to go and start looking a lot more at, um, well, number one, becoming a better painter, but number two, using a natural hair brush a lot more. And then I would have to really be concerned about what kind of paints I use um, and also keeping them very, very, very clean and doing the conditioning that you kind of have to do with natural hair brushes. Now, not all 
synthetic brushes are made equal, obviously. If you go to the grocery store and over where they have the masking tape and the post-it notes and the, the, you know, and the pens and kind of it's a little bit like an office supply little area in that aisle, sometimes you will find brushes there, which are generally aimed towards children um, because they are designed for you to take them and just smash them down into the bottom of your water pot, uh, which is what I remember doing when I was a kid. That's how you cleaned out the, the brush was just hammered it straight down to the bottom of the water cup and spun it around and that cleaned it out. It didn't really. Uh, I mean, it sort of did, but it really basically just ruined the brush. No matter how cheap and crappy and made out of like, you know, basically any kind of weird nylon that you could find, uh, no matter how cheap it was, you'd still eventually just ruin the brush and it would look like this. Um, but there are definitely synthetic brushes that are quite decent, actually. Sometimes diamonds in the rough. Um, the thing that I've found about synthetic brushes is I end up sometimes buying synthetic brushes to see what I think of them. Do they keep a good point? That's super important. Um, and I don't even mean like, do they keep a good point over the, over the years that you own them? I mean, do they keep a good point for a couple of weeks of hard, hard use? If so, good enough for me. Um, if eventually after, like, like I said, a couple of weeks maybe, they start to really get bad, um, they just, it's almost impossible to get them to come back to a point again, um, then, you know, you can start using them for dry brushes or do something else like that. But a, a $1 to $2 brush, in my mind, is something that I don't have to worry about as much as a brush that costs $15, 20 $30 that's made from some small animal and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, all that kind of animal stuff aside, that these, these things are made from an animal. And in some situations, the animal's already dead. Sometimes they can be um, harvested and not kill the animal. I read a bunch of different stuff and it's hard to tell, frankly, but nonetheless, it's coming from an animal, which means that there's more rarity, which means that it's um, much more expensive. I don't know what a golden tacklon looks like, uh, but uh, evidently there's a, a near infinite number of them and um, they don't have to be killed to make, a, a, you know, synthetic brushes. And so I'm, I'm generally better with that. But having to worry about your brush if you're trying to get stuff onto the table is not something that I want to have to do. I want to worry about getting stuff on the table. There are a lot of other little things here and there between natural and synthetic brushes. Um, natural hair brushes have a tendency to hold more fluid. So uh, because the actual strand of the hair, if you looked at it under a microscope, has got like, it kind of goes for a while and then it kind of flares out and it goes for a while and flares out and goes up for a while and flares out. Whereas a synthetic bristle is just a straight piece of plastic. Um, that little flaring out has a tendency to hold more fluid in there. So you can generally have a little bit more fluid in your brush. The downside is, is that um, frequently that fluid is water and maybe not as much paint because the water is smaller than the actual paint and all kinds of stuff like that. So some people believe, and I've not found this to be the case, this is not a reason for me, but from doing my research, some people believe you have to do more coats with a natural hair brush because there's maybe more fluid, but technically less paint in there. Now, other people say that's a great thing, especially when you're doing lots of, you know, layering over layering over layering. So again, this all comes down to personal preference. The reason I'm not doing a video about synthetic versus natural brushes, and instead the video is about why I like synthetic brushes is because again, this is all my opinion. This is the reasoning that I have behind my choices. Your mileage may vary. I will admit, and to be fair, I have only owned maybe about three or four different brands of natural brushes. I have found that my natural brushes, no matter what they are, Winsor Newton, uh, Rosemary & Co. that I can think of just most recently that I've been using here and there, I do find that they shed a little bit quicker than um, your you know, uh, synthetic brushes. And maybe it's because I'm not taking the proper you know, care of my brushes. But again, like I said, I would rather take more care on my models and a little bit less care on my brushes because that gets me more models on the table. Um, again, if I was a really good painter, like our, our man Sam, I would probably spend more time with my natural brushes. But even Sam spends the majority of his time, last time I talked to him, he was saying usually more than 80% of his painting is done with synthetic brushes. And he does good work. He's won a whole stack of awards. So. 
people in the comments are already telling me that I'm wrong, and I get that, and that's fine. And there are other people in the comments who will be telling me, yep, no, you're absolutely right. So there's no great single answer to any of these things. Um, several years ago at Adepticon, I did uh, a video where I talked to a bunch of different pro painters and asked them a bunch of questions and got a bunch of different answers. Pachow. So you need to be able to make the choice yourself about whether or not you prefer to use synthetic or natural. There are plenty of reasons to use both, but it depends and comes down to what exactly you are trying to accomplish. If you are trying to become a pro painter and paint things for competitions, then you're probably gonna be using some synthetic for bases and stuff like that, and probably for metallics, but you're gonna probably be doing a lot of your work with your natural brushes. You're also gonna be spending a lot of time conditioning and cleaning your natural brushes unless you like to throw money in the garbage, which most people don't. On the other hand, if you are just trying to get stuff that you like on the table and get it to a very acceptable or maybe even a little bit more than acceptable uh, version of what you like, then take a look at synthetic brushes and understand that you don't have to baby them as much because they are a little bit more resilient to metallics and regular acrylics even. And also, if you do end up making it kind of worse or crook in the end or whatever happens, then you can use it for now a dry brush or something else. And again, it only costs you a couple of bucks. But make sure that when you're looking for your synthetic brushes that you find a brand that you like. Buy like one set or maybe even just one brush if they sell them separately. And then try it out. Does it come to a point that you're happy with? Does it have a nice thick belly to it? Um, you know, as I was doing my research, I kept finding people talking about zero brushes, the size, size zero and size one. I generally have been painting for the last couple of months with nothing below a size four. So understand that what you've read out there on the internet may not always apply to you. I find a very good, nice, sharp point to be much more important than, um, than a lot of things in, in a synthetic brush. And when you find a brand that you like, then it's not a bad idea to maybe go a little ham and buy a bunch so that you can kind of have them av available, you know, in case there's another time where we end up having to stay home for a long time. One, two, three, four.